Welcome everyone. Today we're going to take a look at the new subarray tool in Martin Audio's proprietary 3D software, Display Free. This subwoofer tool enables the rapid design of ground deployed linear arrays of subwoofers. Using a model that employs traditional techniques to determine the EQ required to approximate and steer far field beams. The subwoofer array tool can be found whilst in the coverage loudspeaker and SPL tabs here at the top of the page. Clicking Add Subarray will open a window for you to choose which subwoofer to use. The list of all available subs are presented. Selecting and clicking Add or double clicking on the one you want to use will create the default array on the zero point of all axes. You can easily change the box type later on in the proprietary editor here. Click on any box in the subarray and the proprietary inspector will be displayed. The array can be renamed and positioned just like any other loudspeaker. Two array types, either broadside stack or castellated arrays, are available. For broadside stacks, any subwoofer model can be selected. For castellated arrays, only subwoofers which have cardioid settings available can be selected. Please email technical at martin-audio.com should you want to use a sub in cardioid mode that currently has no cardioid configuration within the software. To change crossover frequency within an array, come to the crossover section. This allows you to change the low pass filter frequency you wish to use in your array. The stack element section allows you to change the number of subs in a stack, as well as the individual level and delay for each of the subwoofers in each stack or element. These values are copied throughout each stack in the array. For subwoofers with a cardioid configuration, here you can also change which cabinet within a stack is the forward facing and rear facing cabinets, dependent on the type of coverage you are trying to achieve. Castellated elements consist of whole or partial L shaped groups of subs that have cardioid configurations defined. Here you can change the level and additional delay on a row basis. Each sub in that row will be affected by the values you set. You can set the total number of subs or elements here in the pattern section. The number of elements can increment in steps of one, but depending on the array type and preset, the number of subs can only increment in steps that preserves that array type. All spacing properties are linked together. Changing one will update the rest. The minimum distances are constrained to when subs are touching each other, i.e. the gap of zero. The upper frequency is based on a half a wavelength condition, which should be treated with caution. This is often optimistically high when significant beam control is applied. The pattern section allows you to change the number of subs or elements to be able to configure the size of your array. Changing one will automatically update the other, making it really easy to build your subarrays based on how many subwoofers you have on the truck or how many elements you require for control. Here we can see the total length of the array, the highest frequency from which we have control in the array, the distance of the acoustic center from one box to another, and the distance or gap in between each stack or element in the array. You can design the array by choosing the highest frequency from which you require control. For example, crossover of 80 Hertz. This will update the length of the array and the spacing in between each stack or element, giving you the control you require. Beam width can be set from one degree to 180 degrees. Please be aware that extreme values like this are unlikely to provide useful results 
and more than likely to breach the point of diminishing return. Setting the beam width to one degree will generate the narrowest beam possible from the array. By incrementing the width, you can get closer to the coverage required. The beam can be steered either side by a modest amount by changing the direction. Gain shading allows you to control how well the beam conforms to an ideal beam. The degree of shading is expressed as a percentage of the maximum, allowing you to find control over your pattern shape versus your maximum output. Moving the slider to zero will allow us to get maximum shape, whilst shading and adding gain throughout our array will bias towards maximum output. Shading as default is set to 40%. The apply button will update the configuration with the beam parameters and if the calc SPL is checked, then this will solo your subarray and update the SPL plot. If you change some beam parameters, the apply button will be colored orange to indicate these changes have yet to be applied. With the calc SPL unchecked after applying any changes, you can now see that the main calc SPL buttons will appear orange, indicating that an SPL update is required. Often, you may want to see the effect of power distribution in the array with the changes you make to the beam. Unchecking calc SPL allows you to do this quickly. The configuration allows you to see the level and delay applied from the pattern and allows you to manually change these values should you wish to improve coverage. You can also change the horizontal rotation of each element or stack in the array. When the beam direction is set to zero, then a symmetrical application of EQ is applied throughout the array from the center out. You can override this by unchecking the symmetrical box at the end of the list, allowing you to control the horizontal aim of each stack in the array independently. When you change any of the horizontal aim values manually, you can see now that both the apply and calculate SPL buttons have gone orange. Applying the beam will overwrite any manual changes. The channel limiting section will show us the available headroom in each circuit. Thank you again for watching this today. And if there is anything anybody would like any help with, regarding configurations, use of the software, or use of the new update, please contact technical at martin-audio.com where we will be more than happy to help you. Thank you very much for today and have a good day.